Welcome to Buckeyes Tomorrow Morning for Tuesday, March 26th. I'm your host, Tom Moore. The Akron game in 158 days. The game against Michigan in 249 days. It has already been quite a busy March at BuckeyeHuddle.com. We've got uh, plenty of basketball talk since we recorded the last show. The women's hockey team won the national championship. Congratulations to Nadine Muzzerall and her whole team. Uh, the men's basketball team going to play in round three of the NIT a little later on tonight against Georgia at the Schottenstein Center at 7 o'clock. We'll be there for that one. And of course, yes, spring football going on as well. Over the weekend, the Buckeyes held a scrimmage at the Woody Hayes Athletic Center. Media wasn't available there or wasn't allowed there. Fans weren't allowed there. Don't worry. Don't worry. We've got you covered at BuckeyeHuddle.com. Kevin and I did a show yesterday with four players to watch coming out of that in position groups to watch coming out of that game, out of that uh, scrimmage. and then. After we dropped that, Mark Givler came in from the rafters, 16, 16 different notes on players, position groups, things he's learned. Incredible, incredible stuff. That is all on the huddle board presented by Jeff Ruby Steakhouse, member exclusive at BuckeyeHuddle.com. So it would be a good time to sign up if you have not already signed up. Bringing Mark in now, we're going to share just one more of those things. We'd like to save a lot of this stuff for our members, but Mark, I'm going to have to insist the lovely people out in podcast land, I'm sure, want a little more. That video got a lot of a lot of attention yesterday, so we're going to have you give one more piece of information that you got out of that uh, out of that list of 16 different uh, pieces of information. Let people know something else that they should know, other than what Kevin and I have talked about in yesterday's show. Yeah, I think the interesting thing about this spring is that there seems to be just from the reports we, we've we've gotten from our sources and just the, the limited viewings we've had. There seems to be a balance to this team early on that there hasn't been in recent years. Um, I mean, last spring was completely dominated by the defense. Um, it, it, we, every practice we went to, it was hard for the offense to even get a pass off. It was that bad at times. Um, and, you know, years before that, CJ Stroud and the offense were kind of dominating the spring scrimmages. And that's a little, alarming because usually the defense is ahead of the offense in the spring. I mean, it's just, it's just the offense takes time to install the chemistry, everything else. And so we've had these lopsided springs the last four or five years, and we've seen that play out on the field. Um, it, it, it ended up kind of foreshadowing what we saw on the field where last year, the defense for the most part was significantly better than the offense. And then in previous years before that, the offense was, was, much better than the defense. And it was more of a thing where it was kind of showing us where the weak points were on the roster. So, you know, obviously last year it was, it was the offensive line and, and, you know, they, they took a step back at quarterback, obviously from Stroud and Fields and those guys. And um, we were able to see that on the field in the fall and previous years it foreshadowed how kind of bad the defense was going to be this year. The battles are, are super competitive. Um, We'll get reports that, you know, whether it's an offensive lineman or the defensive line having great battles or the receivers in the corners, the the competition this spring is legitimate for the first time, I think, in probably at least five years where we're not hearing these just, oh, the, the defense just overwhelms the offense or the defense can't stop the offense. We're, we're getting really balanced reports, and I think that's encouraging. Yeah, it does feel like when you go back and look at how those previous years have played out and the years the offense was way ahead of the defense, you probably remember those Ohio State defenses and the years that when the defense was way ahead of the offense last spring, you heard Ryan Day talk with the serious open concern about the offensive line last spring. They ended up going into the portal and getting Josh Simmons, and that certainly helped, but it was still not a great Ohio State offensive line this year. For as good as good as this defense defense should be with all the guys they've got back, plus the addition of Caleb Downs at safety, for the offense to be hanging with them and maybe playing even with them, boy, that feels like that's pretty encouraging for Ohio State and Ohio State fans. We can we will be talking about that much more on the huddle board presented by Jeff Ruby Steakhouse, all at BuckeyeHuddle.com. We hope to see you there. That is a great place for you to support us, the work we do, and also be part of a really fun and active, very uh, very eventful. Uh, Buckeye community there online. So, all right. So now on to the meat and potatoes of today's show. We're going to talk, we're going to have Mark on. We're generally talking recruiting. We're going to be talking recruiting here today. This is not necessarily four guys who are on commitment watch for Ohio State, but it is four guys who I think, safe to say, probably Mark has a close eye on in terms of top prospects nationally. 
who could have Ohio State right at the top of their list right now. So let's start, Mark, with the guy who is announcing soonest. That is Tarvos Alford, top 100 linebacker out of Vero Beach, Florida. He is actually announcing on the 30th, so a little later on this week. What are you hearing about Tarvos Alford right now? Yeah, Ohio State had him on campus um, over the weekend a few days ago, and uh, I think I think they're in great shape for for that for that March 30th announcement. Um, that's not going to stop the Floridas and Florida States and Miamis and everybody else of the world from continuing a, a pursuit if he does commit to Ohio State on the 30th. But uh, I like where Ohio State stands uh, to get that commitment on the 30th. Uh, he's been up several times. The relationships are very good. As I mentioned on previous shows here on the channel, the, the, the retention of James Laurinaitis and kind of making him the permanent linebackers coach, I think was going to play very heavily here. And so that's a guy that I think, uh, again, if, if you're asking me, I, I think is going to commit to Ohio State on the 30th and, and be, be their next uh, big name uh, commitment in this class. All right. So that's an imminent one. We'll find out if Mark is right or not about that in just a couple of days. Now, guys are maybe a little further out and other, you know, there, there have been concerns about, you know, recruits pulling out of Florida and, and getting guys actually stick with their commitments out of Florida. There's been some drama around there. Generally, not quite as much drama for guys from the state of Ohio. Guys from Winton Woods generally have done a pretty good job committing to Ohio State, sticking with that commitment, and then turning into pretty good football players over the years. Could have the next one in Justin Hill. He is a 2025 edge rusher out of Winton Woods High School down in Cincinnati. And Mark, this is another one where this is, I mean, this is a top national player. He's ranked as the 12th edge in the country, 119th in the 247 composite overall right now. So this is a very, very, very highly ranked player. What are you hearing about Justin Hill and the Buckeyes? I think those rankings are too low, by the way. I think he's a top 50 national player. And I think actually one site actually, I think, I don't know, I don't know which one it was. I can't remember now, but someone actually did put him in the top 50 finally. So uh, this, this is a guy who I, I think is just a must get for them. Um, I spent some time with him about oh, two weeks ago, maybe uh, down in Cincinnati. And um, he came back up for a visit um, last week. So they are uh, full court press there. It's looking like a July decision for him. Uh, I would expect him to get back up to Ohio State maybe at some point this spring again, and then uh, again for an official in June. But uh, both him and his mom have birthdays in July, so he's like going back and forth, I think, between those two dates. Uh, early ones, early July, one's late July. But love where Ohio State's at right now. I think Oregon is the school that has made the biggest impression on him among the other contenders. But uh, at the end of the day, uh, you know, the, what, what Jermaine Matthews is doing right now and, and just his his efforts on the field combined with his relationships with those guys at Winton Woods and coming back to the high school all the time. And I between that and just Hill's relationship with James Laurinaitis, again, we talked about this with Alford, uh, Laurinaitis being retained here, I think is big in this one. Um, that's been his kind of his primary recruiter because uh, they're recruiting him for that jack position and not as like a pure hand of the dirt defensive end. So um yeah, I, I think they're in great shape for him. They've prioritized him. He's he's an elite edge rusher, and, and I think everything has moved um, even more in their direction here in the last month or two. And you are correct. On three has him now as the 49th player in the entire class. So yeah, so you may you may be uh, ahead of the uh, ahead of the game there on some of the national sites in terms of the re re what where Justin Hill's recruiting ranking may end up. So, all right, we have talked about an Alfred here. We have talked about the importance of retaining coaches. So that will make a real smooth transition to the running back room where Ohio State did not retain Tony Alfred as the running back's coach. Then they have a running back coming in in about a week or so, Bo Jackson, another in-state recruit, someone that you and I have seen at camps and seven on seven several times over the last couple of years. Where, where are things with Bo Jackson and how much did the Tony Alfred departure maybe impact things there? This is the one I think is most interesting to watch in terms of maybe positive for Ohio State, um, look, Tony Alford's departure uh, will be something Ohio State will overcome long term. Uh, it's not going to be a thing that just decimates them long term, but it has kind of thrown running back recruiting into a little bit of chaos here uh, the last few weeks. And so, you know, moving forward, it's going to be kind of interesting to watch which direction things move. Do they do they prioritize some different targets? Do they you know do they lose out on some guys? Do you guys pick up steam with them? I think Bo Jackson is one that maybe could pick up steam. I, look, I know Ryan Day really likes Bo Jackson. Um, was Bo Jackson at the top of Tony Alford's board? Probably not. Uh, so I think this gets very interesting on the 30th and with uncertainty now 
or, but not that not that there was certainty, I guess, before with Jordan Davison and Byron Lewis and those guys. But there's even more uncertainty there now. You're really, I think, rolling the dice, uh, kind of putting all the eggs in those baskets at this point. I could see Ohio State really pushing for Bo Jackson on the 30th, uh, assuming he makes it down. And I think that becomes a very interesting player to watch in the running backs uh, uh, rotation of the, the, the revolving door of running back recruits. And, you know, I think people are hearing you talk about the, some of the national guys and, well, you know, maybe you may get the in-state guy and, oh, is he a fallback plan? Uh, Bo Jackson currently in the 247 composite rated two spots ahead of Jordan Davison as a running back. And, uh, you know, I mean, this is this is someone who is he's, uh, what, nine spots ahead of Byron Lewis. So, you know, this is this is not a plan B fullback guy. Great player. Great player. Yeah. And he is we saw him play in a. Uh, in a a seven on seven camp and playing on defense and covering some like really good, uh, really good receivers and looking really impressive. Like just a very impressive uh, player overall. Uh, another very impressive player, 2025 tight end Nate Roberts. He's, pl- he's coming out of Oklahoma. That is not a place Ohio State has pulled a ton of guys. I think Josh Proctor was probably the most recent Oklahoma native to play for the Buckeyes. And, you know, they have a, a little bit of a battle with the in-state Sooners to land Nate Roberts as a tight end. Where, where are things trending right now for Ohio State? Yeah, so Nate's down to five schools. Obviously, I, I think Ohio State and Oklahoma are the two to watch. I know Oregon's kind of you know making a push there, but I, I think this will be ultimately Ohio State or Oklahoma. Roberts has been up to campus a couple times. Uh, I think he's coming back for spring game. I, I got to check the check our check our visitor list. I it, it all runs together. I'm pretty sure he's on the pretty sure he's on the spring game visitor list for the Buckeyes. Um, that's a that's a decision I could see coming next couple months. I mean, look, the hot zone here is going to be mid June to the end of July. That's going to be the commitment hot zone. That's when we're going to see maybe six, seven, eight, nine kids commit to Ohio State, and maybe some guys commit elsewhere that they're targeting right now. I mean, we're going to see a flurry of commitments at that point in the calendar. I could maybe see Roberts being on the early end of that. Um, I suspect he'll be back in June. Uh, for, for, I suspect he'll do a round of official visits in June. I think he's going to be doing that with his five. So we'll see if Ohio State can get him off of that with the spring game visit. But I like the way they're trending. Oklahoma was very slick. They got his brother in the transfer portal from Baylor. Um, I, I think that's given him maybe a little extra something to think about. But I, I don't think that's something that's concerning Ohio State too much at this point. Um, so that'll be, that'll be something to watch. Uh, I do think Oklahoma can still make a push there, but I like where Ohio State's at right now. I like what I'm hearing there. All right. So could have some recruit news on the recruiting front a little later on this week. Could have a bunch of news on the recruiting front, at least for visits and stuff coming up in a couple weeks for that spring game. And then as Mark said, potentially a flurry of uh, action with official visits and potential commitments coming up June, July. There's a whole bunch going on right now with Ohio State football, and there's a whole bunch going on right now at BuckeyeHuddle.com. As I said at the beginning of the show, you want the real inside information on what's going on inside spring practice? Well, Mark Mark brought the goods this week. You want to check that out. That is on the Huddle Board, presented by Jeff Ruby Steakhouse. Member exclusive stuff. We love to share stuff with you guys on these shows, but we always save some stuff that is only, only for our members at BuckeyeHuddle.com, and it's the place to go for all of that stuff. Tony, Kevin, and I covering the team, Mark covering recruiting, our whole team of X's and O's gurus making you a smarter football fan, all at BuckeyeHuddle.com. Make sure you also check us out at YouTube.com slash BuckeyeHuddle. And if you like listening to podcasts, you sit and have a long commute, well, so do I. A great place to find all of our podcasts is just wherever you're finding this. Just search Buckeye Huddle. You can find them all. Lots of great shows on a whole bunch of different topics, all all for free, all at uh, just all we're asking. Leave us a five-star rating and review. That'll help other folks find those shows as well. That'll do it for today. Thank you guys all for joining us. Have a great day. We'll talk to you tomorrow.